they need faith. Yeah. It goes together, and, and and that was sort of inherent in what we're talking about here. You need you need the level you need religion with our science, mm -hmm. and this is the sort of first time we see the religion come into play. Okay, I swear to fucking God, somebody is talking. A lot of pot being smoked. Also, let's we let's, got a little pretentious on the commentary. I'm not going to be honest. Talk about okay. It. So let's just get back to <laughs> pot saves lives, <laughs> kids. If you can get a weed card or if you know someone with a weed card, um, it's important to remember that it expands your mind. Here's the thing you don't, re you don't realize is that weed cards are sort of, they're only in California these days. The rest of the world doesn't know about weed cards yet. So. Oh, I'm so sorry. So if you can get somebody to purchase marijuana for you <laughs> legally uh, at, a, at a pharmacy, that's what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't understand weed card, I apologize. It's, uh, it's a, turns out it's a local thing. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, in, a, in a way, I, it, this it, for me is like the, my favorite moment in, in Super 8, which is such a love letter to the 80s movies and the kids just go, drugs are so bad. It's like, it's so bald. <laughs> so like, I just love just putting it out there. Like, let's just, let's just have it out there. Um, yeah, by the way, though, if, cause I get this question all the time and now I can answer this on the commentary. Uh, people ask all the time, uh, what's the difference between working with JJ and what's the difference between working with Joss? The difference between working with JJ is, and the difference between working with Joss is on one hand, you have drugs are so bad. And on the other hand, you have drugs save the world. Yes. Well, destroy it, but be through, through careful thought and, and empathy. I don't even know. That, do, would you say that the drugs destroy the world? In no, this no, movie? I'm saying. I, I feel ultimately. like that's the whole reason that saves everything. Yeah. I'm not saying you do drugs. I'm just saying that's the difference. I've, not, oh, I've never personally. You've heard about um, what drugs are like? You know, I read about them in a, in a beatnik book. <laughs> That was a bear. It was a, I, I, you know, I, I made some mistakes as a director. I really wanted her to flip. And then you realize that the human body actually can't do what I wanted it to do. Well, you know, the thing is, it, it's, it's like everything else. You have to explain your intent completely. You can't leave anything to chance. Every, when you find somebody with whom you can leave somebody to chance, like we talked about our editor, Lisa Lassick, um, you know, there are certain like actors where you know, okay, I can walk away. You're one of the people that I have that with. Where I can walk away, which I did many times, to go get drunk earlier than you, and um, uh, and read about weed because I've I've heard about that. Um, you uh, you know you you need those people because it's so hard. And and there was a just a big miscommunication about how she was supposed to flip, and they had the wrong had the rig. Wrong rig, and it didn't. Work. And but, but it, I think it came out. It's but fine. It, That's it one of the things. About but about I remember is like it seems so important at the time. Yeah how the body's going to flip. And then you watch it and you're like, oh, this works fine. Well, we, we got a flip that was not unlike what we were looking for at the end. That's right. Not, I, I really wanted exactly, to go ass over tea kettle, as mm -hmm. I say. By the way, Oh, you Chris, made that phrase up? I always wondered. Yeah. I don't it's, know if it, I made it up. I've heard it. It's because you have a tea I've kettle. It, I have a tea kettle. And I so like you, tea. Yeah. So that shot right there. So Chris Hemsworth. Oh, oh, yeah. For that shot in particular, I'm watching that through the viewfinder and right here as he's giving the speech and I got, and the, the hair stood up on the back of my neck and I was like, oh my God, this guy is an action star. Oh, I remember exactly. I said, oh my God, he's a movie star. And you said, yeah, it was nice knowing him. I know. <laughs> it, it, it was that feeling of like, oh, holy. and we called the studio that night. We yeah. watched the dailies from today because Hemsworth is off the charts good. Yeah. Like, and. That, so and they they watched the dailies and immediately cast him in Red Dawn. <laughs> like boom, <laughs> Which, and then a week after that he got Thor. I mean, it was two days. Really, was it? Yeah, two days. Got got Red Dawn on a Thursday, Thor on a Saturday. God, that's crazy. I was like, Friday must have been a hell for you, a dark, <laughs> scary hell. And he said, I say with some embarrassment <laughs> that I was. Little, he's like, I know I should be grateful about the one thing, but I'm only thinking about the other. <laughs> Friday was a little tough. <laughs> But uh, no, I remember we, we we put the camera lower. Like we want him to be an action figure. We 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 want we want him to be you know a hero, and we want the ceiling behind him, which both gives him like body and and makes it more of a, a horror space. And then we were just like, oh, and of course I was like, well, it's Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I remember that because Chris had a friend that had tested for Thor, and he tested. Uh, and no, but before Thor. that it happened, and and we were like, why aren't you testing for Thor? 
you're clearly Thor, but then you were like, no, no, he's more Captain America. So it became an argument, and then luckily it all worked out for everyone. I, I, I lost. No, he had actually tested, and he just said it hadn't gone well. Oh. And then he sort of went back in, I think. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm very happy to have lost that argument. <laughs> I remember when he says, uh, where's, when, they, when uh, Dana says, where's Jules? And he says, she's gone. Uh, our script supervisor, Susan Lambie, who's the greatest super oh, she's script wonderful. supervisor in the world, she burst into tears. And I'm, and I'm watching through the and I see my script supervisor crying. And when you see your script supervisor crying, you know you're onto something good here. Such a burnout. Yes. Um, no, we, I remember we all looked at that and went, oh, yeah, there it is. There's the depth. There's the relationship. Um, it matters now. And that was the thing that was so important. You know, when you watch movies like this, so often these kids don't care about each other. Yeah. They, it's just like they get killed and it's like, fuck it, run. Yeah. Let's go. And it was so important for all five of them to care about one another and have that feel the, feel the relationships that take place off the screen. And to their credit, all five of our kids got that. Yeah. They, they worked really hard to sort of to make those relationships work. Well, one of the, you know, movie sets. This was my first time leaving California on any job since Waterworld. And, uh, um, and that sort of insular, we're all together thing, you know, they can either, you know, drive each other nuts or they can really, you know, pull for each other. And these guys really got close. It was nice. another element that people to me were like it took them like two or three times to realize oh wait the earthquake is because the gods are pissed because marty didn't die yeah yeah Marty's not dead. people don't get that the other part with that is when people don't understand why they had the glitch in the elevators and it's because marty's been messing with it mm -hmm. you know people don't quite but it's great you know you gotta you gotta give them something you know we got to use the bong twice more after we introduced it. we got to use the window <laughs> again after we introduced it like Having those things, just like, it, you know, and right. knowing you can come back to them, it's one of the great joys of writing for me. Is, it, is it's taken me 15 years of screenwriting to realize that how much of screenwriting is just set up and pay off. Mm -hmm. You just need to set up and pay off, and, and yeah. we do it throughout. It's, it's but, why, you know, it's why the Merman tests mm -hmm. so well. It was, right. it was the top of everyone's sheet. And if you look at it, we talk about the Merman for maybe five sentences total yeah. in this entire no. movie. It's so Very few, smart. and yet it pops because it is so clear in terms of setup and payoff. Well, you know, I, I would say um, my shout-out has to go to Cameron, uh, particularly, I think, of The Abyss, um, in terms of I'm going to set up everything, the spatial relations of everything. The crane is up here, we're down here, the cliff is here, and, you know, the way he just just twists it and uses it and twists it and uses it and, and just turns the screws. Um, that There's is nobody so, better. I mean, we've talked yeah, about this in terms yeah. of structure. And no. it's as simple as, oh, my God, I'm throwing my wedding ring in the toilet, and now my wedding ring is going to save the door from closing. Right. And, and this is a metaphor for this entire movie because this yes. entire movie is about divorce and, and marriage. And it's not a metaphor that you're going to stop and go, hmm, uh, the symbiology of the – you're going to go, oh, God, he's alive. Okay. And oh, yeah. yet it's in every <sighs> frame. Yeah. It's in every frame. It's I die for you. You die for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, The Abyss is good. I know. It's, so it's funny. Let's talk cut. about how great The Abyss is. The extended cut. Better. Uh, I didn't think that about Aliens. Also, the best, and it's not on every DVD, but there's one DVD that has the extended documentary, which if you're, I watched extensively the first time before I started directing because it is the best uh, uh, sort of warts and all documentary of what yes. it is like to make a movie. Uh, it's James Cameron. You, you've talked about this all the time. Uh, after an 18-hour day, upside down decompressing while he's editing dailies yeah. and you realize like oh this is what movie making is and no matter what i'm about to go through on cabin it's not going to be worse than what he went through on the <laughs> abyss so, so don't complain drew like yeah. you, you realize like okay this is if you've signed on for this job this job is hard and uh if, if you think it's as if, if you think it's hard on you uh, james cameron has made it hard on him much yeah. worse and that's uh you know and i i've i've fallen so short of that <laughs> believe me we're all studying at the uh, feet of the master yes.
Oh, I just remember testing that and breaking the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come out something like this <laughs> when the door broke I was like oh yeah you, you didn't know your own strength oh yeah that, you got that Hulk strength <laughs> Thor <laughs> just Thor only Thor not Hulk who's stronger Hulk or Thor Hulk That's is the... stronger Hulk is strongest one there is who would win in a fight Thor has a big hammer okay there you go um, you heard it here first um uh we haven't talked about Japanese horror movies and how much we love them and how much fun it was well, oh I, this I got to do, which was which was a gift from you, a, that, a, a um, reluctant gift. Because yes, we, we no, I knew it was, it was only a schedule thing that you would ever allow me to to take That's the mantle so on good. this. I remember rehearsing with these girls, though. They, yeah, they're so nice. It's just they so were lovely. This is this is what makes life good. And again, first thing that the studio wanted to cut, not yes. Lionsgate, by the way. Yeah, um, we shouldn't besmirch Lionsgate, oh. but it, it falls in that same category that you're talking about of. Confusing versus right. Well, we did so much to shore it up. You, the, the other scenarios that we did, you know, after the fact, and having to dig for all the like footage we could use because we couldn't afford to get new footage. Um, and yet, it does boil down to either you get it or you don't. Yeah. But what we kept saying is, yeah. is look, if you don't get it, it doesn't ruin the movie. No. You, if you don't, if you're not familiar with J horror, if you don't know right. sort of what we're referencing, it's not a big deal. This is not. A, a crucial plot point. It is just something that is there for texture and is important. Having to said that, know. very gratifying to me when we first cut there that uh, so many people responded went, oh, oh, now, because it's another, oh, now we get it. Without question. And that's why we fought a, so there's hard. There's another for this. film with another film structure with another mythology that is not ours, that is not American, that's over here. But it's one of those things that it's hard to intellectualize when you're trying to defend, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why, that's, you know, at a certain point you just need to go, look, there was even talk at one point of cutting the tunnel sequence. Oh, yeah. Uh, and again, this is the film in a nutshell. You right. are rooting for both of them. That's you right. are absolutely desperate that they get through that tunnel, and you're desperate that the Citizen gets that, you know, gets his job done. And this is where, you know, I, this was the first night of shooting with, with Richard Jenkins, and I remember it was 5 a.m. as we're shooting, and it. It was uh, because we the, the, we loved the location so much that we were shooting in, but you they, they that was actually a working uh, uh, office building, and so we could only shoot at night. So we're shooting at five a.m. and Richard, you know, uh, I'm not speaking out of school. Richard's the oldest member of our cast here, mm. and at five a.m. Richard's doing push-ups so that he looks even more winded. <laughs> and I remember thinking, this is why he is yeah. a phenomenal actor. Like All he right. he just got it, never complained, always about the about the job and about the craft. You know, he is love and Bradley, the the enormity of his love. Like, I guess I would see, you know, this movie didn't come out for three years. And I would see him at a convention because he was doing let, let let Me In. Or I would see him somewhere and he was just like, how's it going? What are they, what's going on? He was he just, I mean, you know, that, that love of... He would show up on days where he wasn't working. I remember yeah. when we were shooting the elevator uh, shot that where, where the mass slaughter. And just stand by monitor and watch because he was so delighted by it all. Like, he just... He got it, and yeah. and especially it's what we were talking about earlier. You know, with a movie like this, you need people that get it. Yeah, and Richard was one of them. Like Richard yeah. got it right away, and was on board from the jump, and it it, yeah. it it infected the entire crew. Like once, you know, a person who like Richard, who yeah. had the prestige that he brings, is saying like, no, no, this is good. Oh, I'm another of my brilliant producer moments was, I don't think we should go after Richard Jenkins. He's about to be nominated for an Oscar. We don't have a shot. <laughs> he was nominated. He was already nominated for The Visitor. Yeah. And, we, <laughs> yeah. and, and that was uh, where I was like... But he, he, took, he took this like the day after. We sent it to him on a Friday night. Yeah. Oh, Monday morning, he calls and says, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Without question. Yeah. If and he, he credits his agent, because I talked to him. I had a lovely conversation with him while he had a... A uh, spade sticking out of his uh, chest, and um, he said, "You, you got. I don't. I don't get the call on this one. This is my agent." He's like, "She sent me this and said you have to read this," which is thank which you, is sweet. Rhonda, who's his agent? She's wonderful. And and, uh, 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 and Bradley. I mean, also just the it, the energy and and just the love and the ease, and also the award for most improv left in the movie. Most. Uh, let's just actually lose a little bit after we said. It's. I mean, if it was up to me, we would still be shooting Bradley yes. because it's so much fun. He's just. He's just. He's everything you would hope Bradley Whitford would be like. You know, he just is. He's that guy, and there's nobody more fun to have on set. And so much of his genius 